prepare his body for the grave. And so these women were bringing spices to anoint what they expected to see a dead man. They were coming not knowing how they were going to remove the stone. The other gospel says they even had a conversation among themselves saying who will move the stone away from us. And that's how it is when we're worried about stupid things. We can re reveal and experience the resurrection power of God. Most of us are concerned about Easter eggs. We ain't thinking about the suffering of the nails on the cross. Most of us are worried about a pink tie or a purple dress. We ain't thinking about what the Lord did on Calvary because we've been so busy caught up in the stupid stuff. Buying suits and Easter eggs and hopping in rabbits and hunting without realizing it ain't about no rabbits. It's about Jesus who died for your sin. I know some of us got little children taking pictures with the Easter Bunny. I got a daughter myself. But they've become to value these things as important because we emphasize these things as important. My daughter didn't ask for an Easter dress. My daughter didn't ask to go Easter egg hunting. My daughter didn't ask for a picture with the Easter Bunny. She became aware of these things because of our stupid traditions. She never seen nothing in no Bible. Talking about an Easter egg. Never seen nothing in no pipe about Peter Rabbit and the Easter Bunny. Never seen nothing in the Bible about going, hopping from door to door looking for eggs. Historically, if you realize that Easter should be celebrated on the same week as Passover. Technically speaking, that each and every year that we celebrate Easter, it should be the same time that our Jewish brothers celebrate Passover. But because of Constantine and the Nicene Creed in 326 AD, he decided that, that Easter should be celebrated on the first Sunday after the full moon of the spring equinox. And since that day, the church has erroneously celebrated Easter on according to a pagan holiday from a uh, uh, Anglo-Saxon goddess by the name of Estra, uh, who was the goddess of fertility. And so Easter eggs uh, were a symbol of fertility because uh, in the Anglo-Saxon culture uh, they celebrated eggs as a symbol of fertility. And so the church began to acclimate uh, and acculturate its meanings uh, of the risen Savior and coalesce them uh, with the meanings uh, of the, uh, the pagan Anglo-Saxon culture. So that's how we got a bunny rabbit. That's how we got Easter eggs, and that's how we got purple, pink, and blue suits. The women did not know that Jesus had risen from the grave. Some of us did not know the origin of the Easter bunny or the Easter egg, and so now that we know better, we should do better. Sometimes we act stupid because we don't know better. The women did not know Jesus had risen from the grave. They were expecting to experience and continue their grieving. They expected to, to be spectators of a dead man. They expected to, to watch and look over his dead body, perhaps caress his, his beard, to run their fingers through his hair, to, to, to wipe the tears from their face and rub it and caress it against his skin. They were expecting to see a dead man, but when they got there, they know that he was no longer there. He had arisen. Sometimes we act stupid. This is why we don't consistently share the gospel message. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake, the Bible says, because of an angel of the Lord descended from the heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his robe was as white as snow. The guards were so shaken from the fear of him that they became as dead men. Not only sometimes we act stupid, 
The second thing that happens to us while we don't tell others about Jesus is sometimes we act scared. Look, somebody should say, don't be scared. Verse number five says, but the angel told the women, don't be afraid because I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Again, they were looking for a dead man. The angel says to them, don't be afraid. The Greek word for afraid is phobeo, which means to frighten. It means to terrify. It means to be alarmed. You know how it is when it's 3 o'clock in the morning and you got a loud knock on your door. You aren't expecting anybody to be knocking on your door, depending on who you are, at 3 o'clock in the morning. And you would be alarmed. Your wife Wife would look over to you in the bed uh, and say, go see who that is. Uh, and you're saying to yourself, uh, I can take a bullet uh, just like you. Uh, I, I want to see uh, if we're going to call 911. Uh, they were afraid. Uh, they were terrified. Uh, they were alarmed. Uh, but they were consoled by the angel who said, don't be afraid. Yeah. Truth of the matter is, the reason why we don't tell others about Jesus is because we're scared. Scared of what they might say. Scared they might look at us and see if we really believe. Scared if we are really living the life that we say that our faith professes. Many of us are not doing what the Bible says do about being a Christian because we're so busy being afraid. Afraid of what others might think. Afraid of being accepted. Afraid of the consequences and the results. Jesus said you will be persecuted for my name's sake. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and a man of grief. He had been wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, but with his stripes we are healed. So the angel says, don't be afraid. The angels were signs of judgment in the Old Testament. The women had came after seeing the tragic death of her son Jesus and her friend Jesus, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus had experienced a lot of emotional trauma over the past 48 hours and now they approach the scene expecting to see a dead man, their dead Jesus and now they see two muscle bound Roman soldiers laying down as corpses as the Bible says as dead men, they were unconscious and they were afraid that the angel of God had come from heaven to bring down judgment on the evil Roman Empire. And so these two symbols of Roman authority had now laid dead as rotten corpses in their presence. And so they feared that God's judgment had now come down upon Jerusalem. The angel said, I have come not to judge, but I've come here with a message. And that message is, God is not dead. He's still alive. And he has a message for us. And that message is don't be scared. Reason why, first reason we don't tell others about Jesus, the first is sometimes we act stupid. Look back over your life, most of the mistakes you made wasn't the cause of somebody else. The mistakes were just some stupid things that you did because you were spectating or experiencing things that were not of God. You were trying weed and crack and alcohol and, and, and experimenting with, with some, some, un, some, un, some ungodly sexual activity. And you realize it was stupid once Jesus came into your heart. Sometimes you got scared because you were afraid of how you would be received for sharing about what God has done for you. But don't ever be afraid to tell your testimony. Text goes on to say that the angel said he's not here. But he has been resurrected. Just as he said. Come see the place where the disciples where he laid then go quickly and tell his disciples. Go run as fast as you can. Say that he has been raised from the dead. In fact, he's going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Listen, 
I have told you. So the party quickly 